Well, hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Well, I've been messing around with a workshop computer today. As you can see, the cover has been taken off. And, well, did a couple of things. First of all, I um, installed a card reader. You can see it down there. And it does work for smart media, compact flash, SD and MMSC and memory stick. And it was kind of a thing because <laughs> I had no idea where to plug the card reader into the motherboard. Now I, I did remember that uh, these yellow connectors down there had something to do with the uh, USB ports that you can usually find on the front of uh, computer housings. Now this housing doesn't have any so there are no connections for that. So, uh, well, <laughs> since I knew that this was a USB uh, card reader, I finally went ahead and just plugged in the cable in the way that it would fit <laughs> without knowing what I was doing. But it does work, believe it or not. I can... Uh, no, I can't prove that to you because the SD card that I have over here is in the camera, yes. Uh, so, Next thing I did was I tried getting the floppy disk drive to work. Sitting up there, and originally I had a white one in here, but that wouldn't work. So put in the black one, that wouldn't work. So I knew uh, that uh, there was something wrong with the, well, with something else. So first tried different cables. See the floppy disk drive cable over there. And uh, I finally by doing a lot of messing around, I found out, um, now just as a sample, right here I have another cable for floppy disk drives. This end plugs into the motherboard. This is a part in between, which is for the secondary floppy disk drive. Then down there we have the connector for the primary floppy disk drive. And you can see the part where the cable has been taken apart and it's turned around in a rather weird way. That part is always for the primary connector. And I found out that if I plug the primary floppy disk drive into the uh, connector for the secondary drive, it would work. Don't ask me why, but it did. Then I went ahead and tried a little bit of overclocking the processor. This computer has an AMD Athlon 2400 Plus installed. And I thought, well, maybe we can, we can uh, make it a little bit faster. I think this is running with uh, on 2 gigahertz. And I thought, well, maybe we can turn it up a little bit. So, went into the BIOS, no problem. Not with this computer. The, my main computer, which is one of these um, systems that I that you get out of the shop, uh, has all the features for overclocking the processor blocked. That's why I'm actually looking for a new motherboard for my main computer, uh, so that I can have a BIOS that I can modify myself. Because the processor in my main computer is actually perfect for overclocking. You can actually overclock it uh, in a way that it's twice as fast afterwards without any problems, which is kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, um, back to this computer. I tried that, and now for some reason, this is an AMD system. I have never... Well, actually, I, I, I do have overclocked a processor successfully in the past. Uh, that is now sitting in that uh, huge tower behind it there. It's not used. Um, but anyway, um, it, it somehow messed up, and or that's the way it's supposed to be, but in the end, when I had it overclocked, um, you know, just, just doing some experimenting, the motherboard suddenly detected the processor in there as, a, as an AMD Athlon 2700+, plus, uh, which was not exactly right, and that actually caused Windows uh, to no longer start up anymore. So I thought, oh well, <laughs> gotta, gotta reverse that somehow and did some messing around and no success. Remained a 2700 plus and Windows wouldn't start. 
So finally went ahead and set everything to the default values in the BIOS, which also messed up my uh, boot sequence and it's now trying to boot off of a network and things like that. I don't know how to disable that. It's rather annoying because it takes some time until it found out that there is no network hooked up to this computer. Um, but then my processor finally uh, returned to being a 2400 plus and Windows would start up again. But <laughs> problem that showed up, the floppy disk drive wouldn't work anymore. And uh, well, I was like very annoyed. Once again, my simple cable. I then went ahead and changed the floppy disk drive from the secondary connector back to the primary. Then it would work again, so basically we had a some something going wrong right from the start. And uh, yeah, <laughs> to make a long story short, I have not overclocked this computer, I have installed a card reader, and I got the floppy disk drive to work. So uh, yeah, quite a bit of uh, uh, progress on this computer. Now I don't have to use that external thing anymore. Fortunately the new built-in uh, floppy, uh, not floppy, uh, flash uh, drive uh, can still not detect SDHC cards, uh, which is kind of stupid. But uh, yeah, that certainly is an upgrade because it makes things a lot more convenient. Now another thing I've been doing is I have upgraded the power director on this computer from version 5 to version 8, uh, mainly because I wanted to be able to use all the custom titles that I've created on uh, power director 8 on all my other systems. I do have power director 8 running on two other systems. Uh, I wanted to use those uh, on this computer as well, you know, the little insert that you can see in the lower right corner, the little Dr. Cassette insert, that is a custom title. And I couldn't use that on PowerDirector 5, so that has been upgraded. And, uh, yeah, so, a <laughs> little bit of messing around with the workshop computer. Hope you enjoyed this video, and see you again soon.